Hello and welcome to Nobody Wake the Bugbear, Australia's biggest actual play podcast for the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG First Edition. I am Andrew and I will be the Warden. Joining me at the table are 50% of the players, John and Doug. Close to 70% really, yeah. production-wise. Well, yeah, not 50% of, the, of, of John the, and Doug. Yeah. But of the usual cast of Nobody Wake the Fuck Out. <laughs> 50% of my clothes, though, as I am wearing no pants under this desk. Yep, yep. Like yeah. newsreaders of old. <laughs> Ch- Charlie? Ch- Charlie. How are we all today, gentlemen? We're here. Are you enjoying the extra space and room you've got at the table? It's definitely a different vibe, having just the three of us here. Uh, it, I've never done this with uh, Doug, because we do... We, we have. In, have we? We have uh, a, long, a long history of fantastic episodes with just the three of us. Yes. Uh, based on Ghosts of Gauntgrim, we had some of the best three episodes we've ever had in, in the camp. You, is this ringing a bell, John? Uh, it feels like so long ago. It does. It was. Is this the one where? This is the whole. This is when Gladys. Oh uh, yeah. Situation. Oh, yeah. Not yeah. to spoil anything, listeners, but you know, well, why don't we that. just do the rest of the podcast like this? <laughs> we, we can just kick them out here, right? Just cut their <laughs> cut their shares down to point zero three percent. That's it. We'll we'll have the only two people in the podcast that aren't going to be here next year for the rest of the podcast. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Well, I guess everyone would want to know what we're playing this evening. Correct. Oh, yeah, what are we playing this evening, Andrew? This evening, we will be playing Scenario 1 of Another Bug Hunt, the introductory adventure for the Mothership Sci-Fi Horror RPG. But Andrew... First we, edition. We I haven't know. finished, John. <laughs> Written by DG Chapman, Luke Gearing, Alan Girding, and Tyler Kimball. Do go on, John. But Andrew, we don't know anything about making introductory adventures to the Sci-Fi Horror RPG Mothership by Tuesday Night Games. No, we do not. Another Bug Hunt features four interconnected scenarios. Each scenario can be played in roughly three to six hours with any number of players and a warden. Let's hope it's the three. Yeah, well, it will be. Yeah. The book also introduces a feature called Warden Educational Support, or WES. WES will be there to guide you through this module and provide helpful tips and tricks for running your first game of Mothership. Anytime you see the WES logo, you'll find extra insight and context to help you run the game. You do not need to read these sections while playing. Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, WES. Thanks, WES. It's good, Andrew, because you know, I know you're nervous about running a new game, a new system, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice for you to get some help. So it's like, you're, you, it's like a little in, indicator pops up. I'm, I'm imagining a little indicator pops up and it says... It looks like you're trying to roll a fear save. Would you like some help? That's exactly what it feels like. And it's it's not annoying, but it's pretty endearing, I think. I, I'm so glad we all of us have got Clippy. It was the first thing we thought of when it came to yeah. ways. And it's it's a cool logo as well. It's like, it's four squares that spell out a W. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So it's a good little logo. Thanks, Wes. Thanks, Wes. Well, I'm ready to get started. How about you, John? I... I'm actually quite excited uh, because it's it's less pressure. It's been a, I feel like it's been a while since we've just done one of these breezy numbers. Yeah. Not, not not to not take the module too seriously, but this is, feels more like Green Tomb, where we just rocked up and kind of did it. Yeah. And uh, you know we're actually reasonably good at winging things, so we'll, it it may be a surprise hit. I hope so. It's it will be quite a popular module for new players. I should think so. Anyway. Doug, are you ready to get started? Yeah, I'm excited. It, normally, it's been a bit of a track trend that we do these little side one shots because I'm not here. So it's, yeah. it's a bit of fun now to be the one that is here yeah, and, exactly. and taking the piss out of everyone else. Yeah, we yeah everyone, Josh and Sam are obviously away. They yep. couldn't make this session. So we're just playing anyway and giving a little little one shot, little fun little one shot for us. Getting it off the list. We, we, we knew we would have to do Bug Hunt at some point. Yeah, it's expected. It's expected of yeah. us, yeah. It's going to, yeah. <laughs> so we figured we, we figured we would simulate, instead of um, getting too anxious about it, we figured we would simulate it like a group running Mothership for the first time, which yeah. is to yeah. try to go with the flow. Yeah. You've both created your characters. Yes. yes. John, you've created it using the nice flow chart. Players, uh, the flow chart style character sheet featured in the player's survival guide, correct? I have. 
And Doug, you're using the Mothership Companion app. Yes. Now available on Google Play and the Apple App Store. It is. It is. It's it's really good. Um, yep. Yeah. Then characters are made. The players are ready. The warden, I'm ready, I think. Are you? Yeah. The warden, I'm ready. Then let us begin. Another bug hunt. The Stress Signals. Episode 1. Plot twist. It's actually a straight up fight. Yeah. He dropped in hot. The scene fades in, glistening like a shining pearl in space. The Sato G5 Executive Transport, designation Orpheus, enters orbit of a lush jungle planet. Text flickers across the view screen. Destination reached, entering orbit of SAMHSA 6. We cut to the lower deck of the crew quarters. A man with well-kept but uninspiring features hovers next to a view screen. He stares at five people and a robot. Greetings! As you already know, my name is Mars Smithers. I am the corporate liaison and in charge of this operation. Before the briefing begins, can I get a roll call? Anders! You see a muscular man, Caucasian, but tanned. Sort of rough stubble on his face. Five o'clock shadow. Speak up. And his ear. Pilot. Present. Very good. Renfield. Next to Anders, you see a smaller Weasley copy of, of Anders chewing gum loudly. Renfield. Present. Co-pilot. We focus on the next crew member. Doug. Who is this person and what do they look like? Are we in our hazard suits yet? No, you're in your normal gear. Right. So, sitting in the seat is a man in... No, you're floating. Well, sort of floating around is a a larger man, um, quite burly looking fellow, in what can only be described as booty shorts and a singlet. So we have just come out of cryosleep, obviously, maybe. Oh, it's just his work attire. Okay. He's got a sort of mutton chop facial hair going into a sort of horseshoe moustache, quite thick, with this sort of curly, short mop of hair on top. Very burly fellow. Fish here. Sorry, that was, that was Fish? Oh, Caden Sardine. But everyone calls me Fish. I don't have any... I don't have any fish here. I do have a Caden. Yes. Tick. Doug, what was your class? And what do you think? <laughs> Come on. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teamster. Um, sitting, floating around somewhere is my, my gear, which is mostly different assortments of tools, electronic tool set, a normal tool set, a little um, cybernetic scanner. He's the, the mechanic. And a union man too. Yeah, good. Next to fish is uh, another man. You see a thin, muscular marine in a white tank top, blonde hair shaved on both sides. All right. Yes, Rudolph. All right. Only my mother calls me Rudolph. You can call me Rudy. All right. Rudy. Present. Oh my God, it's Rudy's great, 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 grandson. No, it's not because this... This is not a the future of the Forgotten Realm setting. It's the future of Earth. <laughs> exactly. There are two more figures. One being another human. The other being a robot. John, what is this thing you are playing? I am playing Gear Negotiable Anthropomorph Turret Licensed Independent, or Natalie, spelt G-N-A-T-L-I. Uh, you can just call her Nat... Uh, she identifies as a female android. She's part of the Red Gear class, produced by Gear Negotiable. 
A gear negotiable is just a military android that doesn't have attached weapons. It's just a versatile uh, user of issued weapons. And uh, the the red gear is the, the military version, because there are Teamster versions as well, which are called blue gears. And as uh, what Natalie looks like is she looks like a spindly, kind of sleek, uh, jet fighter kind of android with a with long bandy limbs, digitigrade legs, like pointed finned elbows and knees. And for a head, she's got a horizontal elliptical shape, like a football or a melon, pointing towards the front. And she's got two big bug eyes of dark glass, like sort of tennis ball sized, where digital symbols flash in the eyes, like exclamation points and uh, emoticons. And, and emoticons. And she's got a segmented cable coming out of the back of her head, like a ponytail that, that tucks into her neck. And uh, she turns to look at Rudy and says, You can guess what my mother called me. That was a joke, Tee. Oh, for fuck's sake, another robot. Why do I have to put me with the robot? I can say the same thing about you. I tend to despise meatbags. That was a joke, Tee. Lastly, you see another man, the final member of his team, floating around in this crew deck. And Mars Smithers speaks up. Okay, I had Natalie written down. Gnat. John is showing us the picture. I'm sure it's uh, very cute, John, but also horrifying. It's a fucking de that gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have Mark. Uh, yes. Uh, m- my name is Mark. Uh, present. See a pale man who adjusts his glasses and sort of shifts his eyes around the room. He's a bit uh, nervous, perhaps. All right, everyone's here. Can we stop with this corporate crap? I'm ready to get into the mission. Of course, here is what we know. Mars goes up to the view screen and presses a button and all changes and text streams across the screen. He brings out a pointer. Communications have gone dead at the Greta base terraforming colony. As the emergency response team, we need you to go down to the planet and assess the situation. Your mission is to rendezvous with platoon commander, second lieutenant Kaplan, and assist in the repairing of the situation and clear the area of hostiles and to re-establish satellite communications with the Greta base. Your secondary objective is to find Dr. Edom, the mission specialist. If this is not possible, Secure any biological samples or research notes. Once the base is secured, we will assign you new objectives if necessary. Rudy speaks up. You what kind of hostiles are you talking about? That was going to be my question too. Looks like we could get along after all. Yeah, the two marines, two combat ready, uh, focusing on that question. The terraforming colony discovered a species of arthropods they designated the Karkonids. They were considered a nuisance and eliminated on sight. It is not known if they are the cause of the communication silence, but it may be a possibility. Mark says, oh, oh, marvelous. <laughs> marvelous. Marvelous. Oh, come on, Mark. You're not afraid of a few roaches, eh? <laughs> Fish, do you speak up? Nah. No. Okay. <laughs> no questions? That sounds... So, go in... Um, kill some bugs, fix a comms tower. That is the gist of it, yes. Right. Yep. We will give you the mission organization chart. Here it is. So, wait, have you got any blueprints on this, um, this comms tower? That is article two of your notes in front of you, yeah, but yeah. I will show it on the view screen and up on the screen and on your little notes. You've got SAMHSA 6 mission organization chart and also a map of the Greta base. You see... Second Lieutenant Kaplan, the platoon commander. You see a bunch of other personnel, mainly Dr. Edom, the mission specialist. And you see various other members of this terraforming team. A lot of members. Quite a few. So we've got eight, 16... 25, looks like. 25-ish members. You've got geologists, planetologists, marines. You've got engineers, exobiologists. And it is quite a significant team. Oh, you know what I forgot? What is it? I literally have a character who's based on a Starship Trooper from Starship Troopers. Okay. 
Fuck, he would have been perfect Didn't for bring this. Him in. <laughs> Didn't bring him in. No. So there you have the organization chart. You see your two persons of interest, Lieutenant Kaplan, the platoon commander, or Dr. Eden, the mission specialist. And Sabol. Hmm? So, so, how do you sell it? Sabol? What am I what am I doing? The engineer. The engineer. You're pointing to an engineer? Yes. Sobol. Sobol. That name didn't come up. Sobol. Yeah, f- yeah, but he's on the chart. He's there on the chart. Why are you saying Sobol? What does that mean? He's it, an engineer. He's an engineer. His name is Sobol. You want to fix the tower? Yeah, up the top, top right, down one. Who said fix the tower? That's what I just asked. What I said, we've got to go in, kill some bugs, and fix a comms tower. Oh, yes. And you were like, that's the gist of it. I'm like, okay, so you got the doctor, the plume, can, can pl- 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 and the engineer. The comms tower is in a separate location. Just return communications from the Greta base first. Assess the situation. Okay. That is not your objective to go to the tower at this point in time. If you do find Hilton, the science officer, synthetic, you may also bring him back. But if that is not possible, then the logic core will suffice. Anyway, here's the map of the Greta base. And the view screen changes. And one of you can explain what you are looking at for the audience. If you wish. Uh, we see a network of pre-made sections of like segments of base, like tunnel, which yep. imply that the base is assembled uh, quite quickly. Like a prefab demountable Yeah, a prefab demountable uh, ne- uh, complex. It's a sort of a little, it's a slight labyrinth with a central commissary with hallways leading to crew habitat, armory, garage slash utilities, command center, laboratory, freezer, and pantry. So you enter the airlock and you go to the commissary and then pretty much all the other rooms are accessible from there. So this is your map of the Greta base. This will always be on your system readouts or just your notes. So this map will be referable when you begin the adventure if you need to, as well as the organization chart. Is everyone is everyone up to date on their mission objectives? Any questions? I take that as a no. Don't look at me. It's not my protocol to ask questions. Lieutenants Anders and Renfield will take you to the landing zone in the dropship. A storm front is moving in, so we don't have much time. If everyone is ready, suit up and be ready to disembark in one hour. And the scene fades out. You enter this cramped dropship and you begin your descent down to SAMHSA 6. As you cross through the atmosphere, it is pouring with rain. A tropical storm has impacted the area and it's just pelting down on the glass. The fog is rising up, it's nighttime and it stinks of human sweat in this dropship. You hear the alarms blaring as Anders shouts back towards you. It's going to be a bumpy ride, hold on. Boy, it stinks in here. Luckily, you're all about to have a shower. That was a joke. Tiki. I'm not liking this fucking robot's jokes. <laughs> Sounds like he likes them. Dick. That was a joke. <laughs> Tiki. This isn't the worst ride I've been on. Hey, fish. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get the joke. That's all right. Ah, so you're supposed to say it's a joke and then go Tiki at the end of it, mate. Yeah, so that's obviously the robot humor for you. Tiki. You see Mark just shaking, and his glasses are like shaking off his head. Oh, damn it! Uh, there's two Renfields on the <laughs> screen. Oh, for fuck's sake! Ignore the screen. You're in a dropship. You're all you're all strapped into the sides. Mark, are you okay? I, I, I'm not a joke. Please respond. I'm fine. I, I, I'm just a bit. I'm not used to these troubles. I'm feeling a bit a bit green around the gills here, mate. Don't say green. Like how to get the, the gills part went over his head, but well, you know about gills, wouldn't you, fish? That was like a <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Constant one-liners from this character. <laughs> you hear the alarms blare, and you break through. We're breaking through the system now, and you see through the lights of this dropship. You see the trees of this jungle planet, just thick, and through the thickness of the trees and vines, you see a a cleared-out pad of mud and rain and the dropship begins to lower down into it as the the engines on the side rotate and bring down the descent. Shh. All right, we can't stay for long. 
I don't know if we're going to be able to settle here or fly back, but we'll try. It settles down and just splotches in the mud and the doors begin to open. Look alive, people! Oh, let's move. I've got the feeling I will need servicing after this is over. That's right. I've got the gears and stuff to search you up, sweetheart. And Rudy gets out holding his combat shotgun on his side and at the back is a SMG sidearm. He's wearing standard battle dress as his boots splelch into the mud. You were all given hazmat suits as part of your corporate gear, also with a company issue SMG. Yeah, I didn't get one. Mark is wearing such has, has suit and he has the helmet on and he is uh, not feeling the effects of the rain, but Rudy seems to look up and smile as it pours on his face. Fish, what are you wearing? Are you wearing a hazmat suit as well? I'll have it, but I won't have it on. I'll just have like the suit on, but not the helmet. Oh, all right. Everyone do a comms check. I'm going to try to radio home base. I'm going to try to radio the Orpheus and pick up any systems. Do a scan for channels. Roger, roger. Radio check. Yeah, Rudy does a radio check along with Mark and Natalie and Fish. Anderson Redfield. You scanning the channels, you can pick up yourselves. You're all, you're all okay. Fish, you're scanning for channels. Rudy, you begin hearing... You suddenly hear Anders go, Anders and Renfield just go, ah, ah, god damn it. You're right there? We just tried to scan for the open channels and it's, it almost blew my eardrums off. Oh, Jesus Christ. Right, don't, don't be doing that. Right, okay. Let me try. Natalie, you open comms to the open channel and you just get this screaming static. It almost overloads your system as it just bombards you with this this information I turn it off and you turn it off I concur I would advise against trying that is it like a static or is it like static just, okay. overwhelming feedback indiscernible right right okay right so are you wearing a helmet fish uh no so the rain sort of spilling in your suit a little bit maybe if it's the, the seal's not connected you're wearing a hazmat suit right yeah but you got a helmet off and it's pouring with rain yeah but it's sort of tucked in so it can't really right. get into right. the suit so visibility is very low it's pitch black and you just see the lights of the drop ship just shining out and as comes out uh screams his head out of the back of the ship we're gonna stay here for a while as long as we can uh just try to radio back if you need any assistance if we have to leave, we'll tell you. But just hunker down. This storm's coming in hot. Okay. Go with that. All right. Jokers. How about we trek through the jungle, eh? Oh, yeah. Why is it you think they gave us a hazmat suit? Because we're on a foreign planet. There's all kinds of fucking monsters out here. Because your figures aren't as good as mine. That was a joke, <laughs> Tiki. Fair enough. This fucking robot's a true comedian. And he stomps off into the, into the mud. You are at the landing zone. You are about 15 minutes away from the Greta base by foot through the jungle. I think that Rudy fella likes you, eh? I just see him as a friend. <laughs> Let's proceed. And you just follow Rudy trudging off into the, into the jungle. Uh, for any female listeners, I apologize. <laughs> this is the representation that I'm giving you. We did have a talk. We were like, uh, we don't, you know, we ha most of us haven't played female characters yet. So I was like, you know, I'll do it. I was going to do the Android, but I thought I'll do a female Android. Not that it makes much difference here. You begin trudging through the jungle. Rudy brings out a combat knife and he just begins slashing at the, the flora, the vines cutting through. Uh, I've also got a long shear that like comes out of my arm. Is it attached? Yeah. Excellent. I've got like a hacksaw, but that's not going to do much. Hacksaw? <laughs> yeah, that'll do something. I've got. A, uh, let's say it's a tomahawk. I've got like a long <laughs> yes. nice. tomahawk attachment that like my, my hand turns into like a sort of fly swat shaped. So you're making pretty slow going, cutting through this sort of vines. It seems to be it's not very well maintained. You think if it's a, it's a path to a landing zone, it should at least have been cleared within the last 
few weeks or so, you're not sure. But it could just be the torrential storm that's just blown over all this crap in the way. Yeah. And you squelch through. Something tells me no one has been through here in a while. This swampier than an electrician's ass, but yeah, I'm getting the same feeling. And you see in the distance, your lights opens up into a clearing and it shines against this prefabbed greyness against the greenery of the jungle. I think I see it up ahead. That looks like it. You see a modular prefab base choked by tumorous vines, scarred by the rain and appearing completely deserted. There are no lights on the Greta base. Home is where the heart is. That was a joke. Teehee. You see thick mud makes it hard to move in this area. And even through your comms, the heavy rain pelting against your visors and comm units are making it hard to hear as well. You can try hailing the Greta base channel once you are now closer. Let me try first. Okie dokie. It was bad for the ears last time. Let me try, you fucking robot. You might know, not even know what people are talking about. Oh, yeah. Rudy patches in. <laughs> <laughs> and you scan for this local channel, and Rudy just goes... Oh, shit! Shit! It's a bit loud there, mate. Or oh, is this fucking someone screaming through the microphone or something? It's almost like we told you it was a bit loud there, mate. I did try to emphasize earlier. Fuck. Mark goes... I you told not to use the comms? We're just going to have to speak. And it, he's all muffled because he's not even using his uh, normal comms. <laughs> you know, there's a little, yeah, you see the button, you flick the button and it turns your, your proximity, yeah, yeah. You Mark go. fiddles with the buttons and actually accidentally goes on the open channel and he goes, yeah, and screams go. into his suit. Fucking amateurs. Mark, is this like your first mission or what? No, I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm, I'm here to provide uh, uh, advice. I'm here to collect the samples that I have to identify the samples. As a scientist, what is your opinion on the feed of the comms? Uh, they said the comms were down. Uh, something must be uh, that maybe it's blocked or some signals being sent out that's garbled. I don't know if it's a rain or something else, but we couldn't hail them and we've we found we've confirmed that. Well, what I was on um, tier my fall, thought there was this file and it got pretty out of hand and all of the the responders were a bit bit amateurish there was so much radio comms going on that they no one could actually communicate because there was just so much interference from everyone else communicating well could be this could be this, similar to that the base looks dead it's completely without power how could there be too many comms during a storm as well it doesn't seem right well we're not going to find out out here Let's get out of this ring. Here we go. Okay, so you're sitting out front side, of, you're sitting at the side of this Greta base, and in front of you, the tracks through the mud, there are thick tracks leading to the airlock. So on the map, airlock number two on the map, you see rust is creeping over a large metal door which bars entry to the main building. I'm going to look in the mud and see if the... Because tr the, the, we know there are arthropod... Yeah. Life forms. I'm going to look in the mud and see if there's tracks of any non humans. Okay, do a perception check. Ah, wrong game. Sorry about mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So you look into this. You don't see any tracks. You see gouges, perhaps, but not necessarily single footprints because everything's really warded out yeah. and maybe just squashed over. You, you know it's a thoroughfare because there's, there's tracks going through, but it's more like mechanical or yeah. multiple people walking through, perhaps. All the same. Uh, Natalie's just going to look up and wonder what if they fly? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't in the briefing. They're just small fucking bugs. Hey, I, didn't say, just... I didn't say that. I thought that. Okay, good. <laughs> Rudy comes up and just bangs on this steel door. Is it a... Um, it's fucking locked. We need a crowbar or I was something. About to say, is it a hard lock or is it a digital lock or what kind of lock is it? You see the key card and the keypad. It's just dead. No power. Right. Can I... So you know, my computer skill wouldn't help because it's dead. You could try having an external power source, but I'd you don't know if it'll... Plug myself into it? Nah. I've got an electronic tool set. Can I sort of crack it open and check to see if there's any power yeah. at all to you, it? You crack open this door, this panel, 
and you patch in and it brings up like a an emergency console where you see emergency backup supply reserve active but a main generator offline yeah right well they're on backup power so you think you could probably short circuit it perhaps to unlock and then just use your crowbar to wrench it open manually can i not just sort of override i could try and hack it it looks like it's not probably going to be able to be hacked but you can sort of electronically short it to open perhaps i'll do that and then a bit of crowbar to finish off the job because it's no power to the actual opening system so can i assist you with my computing power sure computing skill this doesn't take long you sort of huddle under this little overlap out of the rain somewhat and you wrench this airlock door open Ta-da. Just like a can of sardines, eh, fish? Barking out. That was not bad. And you enter the airlock. And then all the reindeer loved him. That was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting fucking sick of these jokes, eh? Have you got the setting or something? Can we turn this off? Can we turn this fucking robot off? You be nice to my nat. She might not look it, but she's a sweet thing. Asshole. I look sweet as pie. That was a joke, teehee. So inside this airlock, you've got muddy floors. You're trekking in even more mud. You see storage lockers lined against the walls. This is the greatest character I've ever made. (laughs) 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 We better scatter these storage lockers, eh? He goes straight to it and pries one open with his with his knife. He just that's dumb. It's people's shit, but okay. Well, Look, if they've got the problem with it, they can file it with corporate, all right? I, 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 I'm not saying nothing, really. You do you, brother. He looks in. Oh, there's one hazard suit in here. There's two pulse rifle magazines. Has anyone got the pulse rifle? Uh, hang on. No, I left it on my other pants, sorry. Yeah, I know fucking nobody has it. It was a rhetorical question. There's some sort of Christian shit as well, a rosary or something. Oh, nice. He chucks that. I would take that, but whoever heard of a religious android... As Mark is looking at, yeah, as Mark is looking at the rest of the lockers as Rudy's opening it, uh, I don't want to alar- alarm anyone, but a few a few of these lockers have deep indentations uh, across it. And you look at the last one and you just see what you could only assume is to be deep gouges in the metal. That's a nasty looking slash. Right. What, what, what do you think could have done it? Um, I'm going to hazard a guess here, right, and say a bug. They're not supposed to be that big, are they? N- no, they, they weren't. They were a nuisance. They weren't anything like this. And we've got a first fear save from Mr. Mark. Uh, disadvantage. Yes. <laughs> well, now you're making me fucking jumpy. Trust me, it would only be worse if I wasn't joking all the time. Let's do a fear save. Are we all doing it? Yeah. 81 for Mark. Ooh. I'll probably uh, chuck me helmet on and um, sure. turn the little headlamp on. You didn't uh, have that on before? You're walking through the dark? Through the forest? Through the jungle? Rudy has his lights on. Oh, yeah, I, my, my eyes were like Well, I have beaming. a flashlight as well. Yeah. So Okay, excellent. I, we'll say I had the flashlight and now I've got I failed headlamp. my fear. 84 over oh, 75. Well, we're all in fears too. Oh, shit. Sorry. Rudy failed as well but he tries to hide it but look we were told there were fucking bugs here and I'm, yeah. I'm going to expect them so I don't care how big they are I'm going to blast its fucking head off assuming it has a head well it's just a cockroach it's just this friggin Wait. This, yeah on your readout before in the briefing you just got this small crab like arthropod about the size of a dog and it didn't it didn't have massive claws like this could be um Fish, what happened? What did you get? I failed miserably. Yeah. Good. What'd you get? Uh, 71 on. Rudy 20. failed. He got 67 over 56, even with his significant fear save. What did you get, Doug? Um, 71 over 27. 27 isn't very good. And lastly, uh, Nat. Nat, I got 84 over 75. Jeez. This mission is already more complicated than advertised. Well, that's just the, the usual to expect from the company. They send us into these shitholes. So let's say it's not one of the bugs. Some psycho did that. 
went crazy with gardening shears or something. Still, bad news. What if it's some kind of alien fever? Look, I don't want to talk about anything biological. I just took, I threw out that hazmat suit. I could put this one on. I never want to talk about anything biological. That was a joke, tee hee. All right, let's get moving. And he goes to open the next door, but it doesn't seem to budge either. Is it the same kind of mechanism as the airlock? It is, but Fish, you would know that this door would need to... You would need to close the other door to open this one, otherwise it would... It's an airlock. It's uh, an airlock. Right. Um, so, you guys... Are, yeah, give us give us a hand here, Rudy. We're going to have to shut this door um, to be able to get the, the next one open. All right. And Rudy comes up, gets out his... Uh, no, he just grabs the handle and just tries to slam yeah. it shut. We just, yeah. <laughs> it just rusted, grinds against it, but it does close. And you can open now, you open the door. Let's open the door. Yep. You open the door. Crack it open. You move in. Rudy takes point along with Natalie, Mark and Fish in the rear. Yeah. And you creep forward. Into the commissary. You enter the commissary. I don't feel welcome in these sorts of rooms at the best of times, for obvious reasons. Tell you, hey, you open the door, and just the smell of corpse, rotting flesh, hits your nostrils. I've got my helmet on Fear. now. Well, Natalie, you're a robot. You don't have nostrils. Well, everyone who can smell... It's just Rudy, I think, because me and Barker got our helmets on now. So Rudy smells this. And makes a fear save. At disadvantage. At disadvantage, you son of a bitch. <laughs> 17 and 29. Pass. Nice. Shit, someone opened a fucking window. This place stinks. Stinks like what? Like a dead body or something. Someone left a fucking corpse in here or something. I know the spell of death. Pretty rotten, mate. Um, like... Dead... Uh, yep. Okay. <laughs> Tripping over his words there. You see the commissary ransacked. Everything's dark and the shadows casting long shadows against the walls. You see a ransacked mess hall and recreation room. The emergency lights are flickering. The place is a mess. Fucking robot. You see a torn banner hanging, drooping from the ceiling. We'll get to you in a bit, Doug. It says, Happy Birthday, Olsen. This banner. And um, yep, yeah, sorry. Does it, never mind, carry on. You can act, but I'll just... I'll give you the immediate explanation, then you can act on that. There's bullet holes in the ceiling where the rain is coming through, puddling on the floor. You see empty cups, dishware, broken glass, bullet casings, old dry blood splatter, and large claw-like gouges in the furniture. Uh, do we know what the date of Olsen's birthday was if he was on the info sheet, he or she? Yes. You don't have to tell me, just what's the date today and how much, like... How long ago was the birthday? I'm guessing you would have that information and you would be one to memorize it, Natalie. Yeah. Whereas the others probably didn't, Rudy didn't give a shit what their birthday was. But let's say Natalie got their whole uh, yeah. file. Yeah. And the birthday was weeks ago. Maybe a month. Whatever has happened here took place at least over a month ago. Yeah. Judging by the birthday sign. Yeah, I could smell that, you idiot. <laughs> Fish is just in the, like he's he's finally for the first time pulled his SMG out and is just sort of looking over it to figure out how the fuck to use it. You failed, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I rolled a I rolled a twenty five under twenty seven, but because there's a robot, I rolled a thirty eight over twenty seven. <laughs> Thank you, robot. Natalie's like search around, like walking in like a crouched thing, holding like her her tomahawk out in front of her in a defensive position uh, and yeah we'll search around for more evidence of stuff yeah Natalie as you go through you begin to you feel suddenly slower you you know the comms aren't on but you start getting this feedback that's just like <laughs> make a sanity save And Mark... It's uh, 20 over 17. Mark is going... So you passed? 
Or you no, failed? failed. Failed. Okay. Natalie, you fail. Rudy is walking along. Let's do a little thing here. Rudy is walking along. Mark is sort of hovering around, sticking close to the marine. And, uh, uh, Rudy, I, I don't want to alarm you, but did you cut yourself? What are you talking about, Mark? You, you, the back of your neck, your arms. And Rudy looks down, and you see all these scratches and cuts in his arms and neck. Oh, those fucking vines walking through that jungle cut me up. I didn't even notice the rain was washing away. Oh, sorry, I thought I would have noticed that. Anyone else think that's not what it was? Don't, what? I'm saying that out loud. Rudy passes around. Oh, sh oh no. Oh, there's a, there's a sub, there's a head. There's a head here. All right. Don't go over and look at the head. I'm going to go look at the head because <laughs> I've got the database, so I'll know who it is. You look at this head. You try to identify it. You cut to your scanning mechanism. You see it's trying to detect a face, but this, this decomposed head is so damaged. It's been ripped off at the neck. It's a woman's head, but you don't know who it is by its features. Fish, you see over, as we fade to the next person, Fish, over in the corner, you see, leading into the crew quarters to the west of the room, northwest, you see a barricade, makeshift barricade made up of the couch, table and chairs are all shoved up against the door. In the center, you see an upturned table that's, it looks like a maybe a birthday cake was here or food, but it's splattered now, it's all rotten. It's, you know, it's completely rotting away. And that's what you can see at face value. Happy fucking birthday. Rudy's going around the eastern side of the room investigating. Natalie, you're going through the middle. Yeah. So Natalie, you approach that table. Yep. You look around and you see an arm, human arm, uh, popping out the side. I reach out and grab the human arm reach out and grab the human arm and it just pulls out and you see this streak of blood as the arm detaches from this rotting corpse and you see under the table another headless corpse in fatigues a gigantic hole in its neck you look at the arms and through the decaying flesh you just see hundreds of tiny little cuts into the skin I'm going to inspect the arm closer and see if there's like are they just slash cuts or are they deep cuts? The skin is decomposed, but it looks like these little, like paper cuts almost. Really thin cuts in the skin. The chest cavity of this body is hollowed out completely, as if something erupted for the inside. Roll fear. A san roll a sanity or roll fear. Sanity? Okay. Fear's fine. Just you. Well, uh, fear's higher, so do you want me to. Yeah, roll fear. Panic or not. Fish, are you just standing there? No, I'm going to radio back into the ship to... Is it Anders, was it? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh... You got a copy there, Anders? You go to radio the ship and it picks up... Yeah, everything's... What? What? And it's all static and you hear him for a split second and then you suddenly hear this screech of static. And it overloads your senses. Please roll a sanity. Uh, I failed. 83 over 75. You're coming undone. I'm at 5 stress. Uh, 26 under 32. I actually passed something. Ooh. I'm going to I'm gonna talk on the comms. We might have a problem. I have found another body. This one's torso is hollowed out, implying some kind of parasitic infestation. This is not a joke. Mark goes, what? What? And rolls a, rolls a fear. At disadvantage. That is a failure. 79 over 33. Another stress for old Marky Mark. And as you're going through your comms, that message, just before you finish, on the opens on the comms channel to you, you just hear this this screeching static begin to creep into that message. And then shuts off. Look, I Rudy speaks up. Look, I think there's something fucking wrong with these comms, eh? I don't think we should be using them right now. Rudy, I've got I've got a splitting headache. Rudy, turn around for a second, please. 
Rudy turns around. I'm going to compare the scratches on the arm to the scratches on his hazmat suit. They are uh, identical. Rudy, remain calm. But don't tell you to be... Have you dealt with humans? Have you told people to rem remain calm before? Do you know what happens? I'm a marine. Something scratched you. This is not a joke. I told you I went through the fucking vines in the jungle. I'm going to throw the arm at him. <laughs> he steps back. What the fuck are you doing, you stupid android? You stupid robot? I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to look and point at it. Look, we just do what I get our fucking mission done and get out of here. Where do we go? To the command center. We got the... Find out what's wrong with these comms. Whatever you say. So you can, as you're inspecting the rest of this body, Natalie, you find dog tags saying Captain, Lieutenant Captain Xavier. And if you look at your, your these chart, were, sorry. These were the remains of Lieutenant Captain Xavier. And he was the APC driver. Yeah. You know the, there would be an APC kept in the garage. He was the APC driver, meaning he would have made regular trips out into the jungle. Perhaps he brought something with him. To the south, exit, the west, uh, entry to the freezer and small pantry. Well, theoretically, right, if I was under attack, I would want to move to the most sort of secure, thicker, heavier area. Now, if I was trying to survive this, I'd probably hunky down in the freezer area. If I couldn't get out. Who's going to be sitting in the freezer? I can go check the freezer. Maybe we should split up and check different rooms. That was a joke, tee hee. <laughs> Look, let's check... Oh, right, we'll check the freezer first. Rudy as, opens the door. As Rudy sort of heads that way, Fish, working with Nat in the past, understanding how Nat sort of thinks and works, looks at the arm yeah and sees the little cuts cuts hey. are you seeing what i'm seeing here i think so as you guys attention is done is uh, occupied and rudy is back towards you opening the pantry the corridor to the pantry we see mark on the camera we see mark just slink back slowly take off his glove of his hazard suit stare down and then shakily put it back on. You, um, you're right there, Chief? No, you didn't see this much. I just oh. explained that he did it when you were talking to Natalie. Oh, okay. You can continue. Yep. You're talking to Nat. Oh, I, was, I was kind of... I, I mean, two and two might equal four, but that doesn't have to necessarily mean that four is going to move on to eight. Just because those scratches are there doesn't mean it's what killed him. It could be, you said he's an APC. You said he probably brought something back with him. It means he goes out into the forest regularly. Scratches could just be that he was out in the forest. You hear Rudy's voice echoing down the hallway. You, we got another body. Yeah, right. Let's go. And you all rush in. <sighs> you see Rudy standing in the pantry. You see the shelves. You peek into the side. He's got his gun out pointing at the ground. You see shelves are completely bare in this pantry. Contents are removed and divided into large piles of MREs onto the floor, unopened. And in the far corner lies the slumped over body of a marine, also dead, emaciated and thin. That's two for two on dead marines. Fun. Has it got a head? Yeah, it's got a head. So ema emaciated, you said? Yeah, has anyone got medical skills? Uh, no. Uh, Mark is a scientist. Mark can can come in. Oh, this, this man died of st starved to death, or starved significantly. It, the body fat is gone. That makes no sense. But there was food all around here. Why why didn't he eat? Why didn't he eat? My point exactly. As an android, I know two plus two equals four. And you see, Lute second lieutenant Lange. What? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll a sanity for that. Because a person starving to death in a pantry makes no sense to yeah, me. Mark, yeah, Mark will roll sanity as well. Nope. Success 29 o under 67. He's very sane. 31 over 17. I'm at now 6. Yeah, um, what am I? 56 over um, 32. All right. You want me to check the freezer? Yeah. Go ahead. We'll cover you. Maybe we'll find the big fatty. Dad, how nice would that be? I don't 
don't know what that means. It's a, 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 a rather large human being. Oh, you mean like the prerogative, not the body part? Yes. What the f- <laughs> Yes. The prerogative. Rudy opens the door. Derogatory, rather. And you, you see this walk-in medical grade freezer. No, sorry. He doesn't open it. It's locked. He, no. he, he reaches out his hand and tries to open it. No, I, I almost bought a fucking lockpick set thinking, no, oh, no, I won't need that. Um, I can use the best lockpick I've got. I've got a shotgun. I can blow this lock off. Blow it right off. I mean, go for it if you want to waste around. Wait Otherwise, a minute. Give me a Rudy. couple of minutes to work my magic. Rudy. Oh, no, I'll let the fish make his... you, you got to let him swim. Yeah. We should be careful about making too loud of a noise. That too. Oh, you are correct. I'm going to do a perimeter search. I'm going to go back into the commissary and guard the door. Damn, Yona. I'll go with you. All right, they disappear. And Fish, you are left with Mark in front of this freezer. Work on this door. So, Mark... Y- yes, fish was it? Yes. Which um, I'm afraid we haven't spoken much. No, no. What's your sort of what's your story, mate? As I'm sort of pulling the paneling off this. Well, you can yeah, you can tell he's a bit. Uh, you're trying to maybe take his mind off what's happening. Yeah. Well, I worked at the company for about three years, and I wasn't part of the initial terraforming operation, but I was on reserve. That's why I was able to go on this information this mission. Uh, I didn't want to go on this mission, but I was I was under contract. And I'm a scientist, and th- there's very important research being done here uh, about the this sort of biological biological fauna and flora. So I was here to gather Dr. Eden's samples and bring them back to the company, secure it. Uh, what about you? Um, I've been working for the company for twenty odd something years. I mostly go on to the more um, barren but resource rich planets, working on there. Equipment, maintaining stuff. I'm a maintenance man. Um, now, I thought I was sent here because I'm one of the better maintenance men for this job. Now I've got a feeling that it's because they just want to fucking get rid of me. Which makes kind of sense now that I think about it. I am a union man. I'm kind of a bit of a pain in their ass, so to speak. And you're sort of working on the wiring. We cut to Rudy and Natalie. So what kind of jokes do you like, Rudy? That is not a joke. Please respond. Well, look, I'm not into that ha-ha funny sort of jokes, stand-up routine, you know? Things are funny in life as enough as it is. So I'm not I'm not much of a funny guy. I've got the funny accent, I've, I've been told, but I'm not much of a joker. I'm trying to learn as I go. But I must say, you're doing a, a pretty terrible job. It's not, you know, when you have jokes in a horrible situation it doesn't really calm things down if you try to force it I'm sure you can be funny just letting it happen naturally I am letting it happen naturally it's just that I'm obliged to finish them the way I do you both hear this knocking coming through the walls from the walls all the walls? Like internal walls or external walls? You just hear this faint knocking, probably coming from the north. Okay. Through the floor, the walls. But it's through the pouring rain. You you can't tell if it's uh, on purpose or not, but it sounds rhythmic against the pattering, the randomized pattering of the rain. Yeah. Did you hear that? What are you talking about? You've got a robot ears. You hear much better than I do. It seems like he doesn't hear it. It seems like he doesn't hear it? Well, he's been denying a lot. (laughs) He's been in super denial of, like, everything. Even your funny jokes. Well, he seems to deny that he was scratched by something. He seems to deny, like... No, he said he was scratched by vines, mate. Really? That's all that it is? Why would it be anything else, John? Why would would it be a detail at all, Andrew? I don't know. Why is he the only one that got scratched by... We all went went through that jungle. Yeah, but... As players, we know that Mark has looked at his hand and put it away quite quickly. Fish hasn't checked his hand yet. Fish, did you take your gloves off? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, we cut back to Fish. <laughs> as you're working I, on... I was actually going to make a fucking mention of the fact that and, I'm taking her off yeah. to do fine 
So we cut back quickly. Rudy's just getting there. You've just heard the noise, and we cut back. Mark is sitting there. Um, I don't mean to throw... Uh, did you cut yourself, too? Hey, Your hand. Yeah. We're at it. Just a scratch. Mark takes off his glove, and you see all these paper cuts all around his skin. Uh, I believe there's something wrong here. I did not take off my suit. I was not cut by vines. Both of you make a fear. Without disadvantage this time. Hey. Failure, 70. So they're clearly inside the suit. <laughs> clearly the hazmat Ooh. suits are full of... Okay, wait a minute. So pass. They... <laughs> okay, I see what's happening here. With a eight. You, f- you passed with an eight? Yep. Lucky bastard. I did. I'm gonna. I'm just going to say this above the table, and if it ruins the plot, I just want to be, go down in history for being a clever bastard. Yeah, go for it. They gave us these hazmat suits explicitly. These hazmat suits were full of little tiny insects already. They did it on purpose. Yeah, it's a, that's a pretty elaborate, costly way to do it, don't you think? Just to fuck with you? Well, then where would it come from? You don't know. Obviously. You, you do know, Andrew. I do. But as I've said before, it might not be very explainable at this point in time until you get more information. So you can do a process of elimination. You know it's not from vines as a player. You can write this down. You're, you're all players here. A, there was a knocking sound. You hear See, a knocking I, sound? I, 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 prepare my, I, I prepare my SMG. Uh, Rudy reacts and brings out his shotgun. What do you hear, robot? I heard a knocking sound. Coming from the north? Let's go and investigate. Walks forward. Yeah. You walk towards the hallway, towards the command center, and the long hallway going to the lab to the east and the garage to the north. And you stop at the door. We flash back to the freezer. The freezer unlocks, and you hear this sucking of air. And the cold just hits your face. The freezer's still operating on emergency power. Can I lean my head out to the side? And um, put my gloves back on, poke my head in, and let the headlamp sort of illuminate it and see what I see. You were probably prepared for this. See a corpse, frozen, completely. A marine, and a discarded medical case next to him. The frozen marine, called it, is wearing a tin foil hat. Didn't call that. And his dog tags say Lieutenant Corporal Resnick. Resnick. Uh, what do you see? fish well i called it uh someone did try to hide out in here um is he dead is he dead yeah um he's wearing a tinfoil hat a tin tinfoil hat yeah i'm gonna just take his dog tags pocket him you take his dog tags and he in the other hand in one of the hands he was clutching a plastic vacuum tumbler it just falls out of his hands snapping off his fingers just fall onto the floor <laughs> and you jump a little bit <laughs> <clears throat> and you just see this frozen plastic container with this liquid inside completely frozen I'll um I'll grab the container uh, is, is that a medical case? I was shaking it out to give it to him being like hey um you're a doctor right? yeah let me have a look yeah what the fuck is that? This is what you're all looking for? So there's two things. You've got a medical case and a plastic tumbler. Yeah, the tumbler is what I'm giving him. Uh, he looks on the looks on it, scratches off the label. The frost just covers over this label. And you see on it the chemical symbol for hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric. Ooh. <laughs> and we cut to Rudy and... Delicious Natalie. calcium. <laughs> Are we going to search through this door or should we tell the others? I don't want to open the radio. Let's wait to see if anything happened to them before we start some more shit. Alright, you stayed here. Keep an eye on that door. Obviously the barricade is fine. There's nothing going to come through that in any time. And I'll go check on the others. Okay. Just as you, just as Mark's reading the hydrofluoric acid, Rudy comes in. You find any frozen chips in there, bro? Yeah, I got a bit of... No, I'm going to make that joke. Not, not this guy. Nah, we found some um, some shit though. There What's was a frozen, dead frozen I was, shit. I was I was correct. There was a person in there. So, but um, Doc's looking at it now. Looks like hydrofluoric acid. Yes, there's hydrofluoric acid and a medical case. 
he pops open the medical case that you've got and this hiss of frosty vapour comes out and he looks through it ah medical supplies uh, chemotherapeutic agents mainly used to treat extreme radi- radiation damage chemo what's that got to do with hydrogen okay well, there's, there's, there can be radiation hazards on foreign planets when dealing with mining and such. Yes, yes. Uh, we didn't detect any radiation uh, on the scans, but they would have had a, these supplies. Perhaps, this is a marine. Perhaps he just grabbed any supplies he could and tried to hold up in the freezer. Makes sense to me. Is my uh, reckoning. What did you find out there, Rudy? Or do we... Uh, Natalie heard a noise coming from the north. We're going to check it out. We were just waiting for you. Natalie's going to walk up to where the knocking sound from a knock on the wall. The knocking has stopped. You knock on the, the wall. Doom, yeah. doom, doom. You listen. And you just hear... It doesn't come through your comms, but you hear... No. You're supposed to say, who's there? <laughs> that was a joke, T. Oh, God. Knock, knock, joke. Oh, yes. <laughs> And you can just, yeah, you get this reply and it's just intelligible clickering. And Rudy comes out with Fish and Mark. Why does no one else hear you? All right, I think we should get moving. We've found no one's alive here. It looks like the chances are we're not going to find our charges, but we need to try to get the comms up and running. We need to restore power so we can radio back to base. Agreed. There may be some activity behind this door, so everyone get ready. This is not a joke. Okie dokie. Mark brings out his SMG that he was given, issued. Hey, Rudy. Um, don't want to sound like a fucking tourist here or nothing, but um, can you just quickly... How the fuck do I use this? Look, you just point at anything you want to kill and pull the trigger, but just make sure nobody else is around. Right. Even I know that much. Normie, yeah. that was a joke, Tee yeah. <laughs> Look, I can kick her ass in cod, but I can't fucking... This, this is a bit more different. Look, no one showed you how to use a, a weapon before we came down on this mission. That seems like an oversight. You couldn't kick my ass if it was a gravity ball, showed. Anyway, that was a joke, Tee You just let me and this robot deal with any hostile, and you stay in the back, right, and deal with the technical shit. Yeah, yeah, done. That sounds Shh. like a... Opens the door. Stinks of human flesh rotting through the stale air. And you walk into this corridor. Rudy, Natalie, Fish and Mark, you see gouges along the floor. I'm gonna talk to I'm gonna talk to Fish for a second. I'm hearing sounds. I don't know if anyone else can hear them, but they're coming in the comms. Well I got another fun one for you, Nat. And I'll take off my glove and I'll just show her my hand. Mark's got him as well. The three of us do. We've all got them. Something I'm, is happening to us. I'm going to check if I have them. <laughs> Natalie, you do not have skin, so you do not have these paper cuts on you. However, now that everyone is looking at these cuts, everyone can make a fear save at disadvantage. Stop. Yep, thank uh, You're welcome. Well, do, do, I, do, do me and Mark need to do it, considering we just did it two seconds ago? No, you've confirmed. Oh, you knew Ray, Rudy had it. You've already done it before. So yeah. only, only Rudy and Natalie. Yep. Uh, success, 35 under 75. Rudy, critical failure, 66 <sighs> over 56. Let's do the panic. Let's do a panic roll for Rudy. Oh, Rudy has no, been... Pan- fucking, oh, no, he has to fail it. He has to fail it, and then we get to... Yeah, so uh, here we go. Give good vibes to Rudy as he makes his per- first panic check at stress... Eight. Holy shit. He's that high I'm only at six. I'm at six as well. Seven. Panic. Fuck. Everyone roll a fear. A a disadvantage for you. Everyone else make a fear save right now. And Rudy takes the condition. Nightmares. Rudy gains a new condition. Sleep is difficult. Gain negative on rest saves. He doesn't sort of manifest it right now. It was the jungle. It was the fucking jungle. I've been cut by the jungle. It's Sounds like everyone's been cut by the jungle. That's all it is. Fucking robot. Nothing wrong with me. <laughs> Rolled a three. 
And then I rolled a 40. Oh, that's another stress, mate. Yeah. Let's do Mark. Let's do that fear save at disadvantage. Critical fail. <laughs> 33. Mark is a Over scientist. 33. <laughs> it's a critical fail on the scientist. Yeah, exactly the, the fail. Oh, uh, Mark has get, lose, lost a sanity save before, and I didn't make you all gain you one stress. You automatically get a stress, yeah. Oh, fuck me. So do, everyone out of stress from before. We didn't do that. And I'm up to Rudy now. I'm on eight. So Mark, Mark's on eight. Rudy's on nine now. And I believe Mark has to roll a panic right now. Here we go. 19 passes. Nice. Uh, I believe we, we have, there's a lab down there. The door's closed. You see the door open into the garage is open, as well as the command center just in front of you. You see the door open. Why don't we try and get this mission done as soon as we can? Yes, I, I agree. All right, I take point. Natalie, you come in with me. Guns at the, at the ready. If it's the command center, why isn't it in the center of the base? That was a joke. T E. <laughs> I just like that you're genuinely finding these funny. <laughs> I get so dumb. I love cringy jokes. They're great. So you head in. You see the central nervous system of the base and primary communication station for the company. Slumped over the controls is a marine. You see the back of his head blown out. One hand holds a revolver. The other hand holds a small chart and the power is still off. Looks like the job got to him. Quick and clean. Rudy's just sitting there staring. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm showing no sign of being disturbed by dead bodies, so I'll just go up and grab the chart. You go and grab the chart, it falls out of his hands limply. You see the same chart with all the personnel written on it. Yep. You see paper cuts all around his skin. Paper cuts, quote unquote. His revolver has five shots remaining out of possible six. And the dog tags read, Second Lieutenant, Kaplan. This is Kaplan. Yup. We'd fade back, pass back to Rudy, see his face. We pass back to Fish, washes over his face. We pass back to Mark. The camera spins around, and behind Mark, silently crawling through the corridor, sneaking up on him, is this large crab like creature with dozens of legs, a huge central mouth and a hard spiked carapace as it opens its mouth and shrieks. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs> roll for initiative is what I would say if, if we were playing. D &D. If it was D&D. But we will roll for initiative next week. Do you think it's going well? Yeah. Yeah. You like it? It's yeah. going all right. I, I, this is the, the highest I've been this quickly in stress. Yeah, you're only in the first few a couple of hours, maybe. There's something I want to try. And I feel like the fact that they specified it was hydrofluoric acid yeah. might work. Oh. So we will see. You and that plan is cooking. to just fucking lob it at the monster. Oh. After I panic shoot, <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I really want to <laughs> end this adventure by blowing up. Because <laughs> I have the perfect line to finish on, if that's what I do. Um, I'm sure you've been think cooking that one up, one of the jokes up. I, I, like, now. I like the idea that Nat and um, Fish have been like a duo for a long time now. And Fish knows that Nat has this explosive head. And to fuck with him, Nat just occasionally just starts going beep, beep, <laughs> beep, yeah. beep, beep, I, I just go, beep, beep. I, no, I just go. That was a joke. <laughs> well, everyone, that was part one, episode one of Nobody Wake the Bugbear Plays Another Bug Hunt Distress Signals. Scenario one of Another Bug Hunt. We will be back next week. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And we'll see you in space.
It's a jungle planet, isn't it? Full of yeah. bugs. Reminds me of Predator. Yeah. I feel like I should have brought a flamethrower. Well, you didn't. <laughs> We're going into the green inferno. <laughs> all right. Here we go. We're it's all, good for you. We're all relaxed. We're going to have a fun time. It's going to be fun. No pressure. <laughs> No expectations. <coughs> uh, you know what would be funny? If this just becomes the big one. Like, because it's the... I guarantee it won't. It's the, you know, the intro one. It's yeah. the one that it's everyone's Everyone introduction like, yeah. to Mothership. The Ypsilon one. So everyone's just like, oh, we'll, we'll see what, what other people... But then people say, oh, they, they changed so much. We can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. No, that's the... Plus side will be changed so, changed so much that they can let their players listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do I get out of this chicken shit outfit? Hudson, come here. Come here. It's an intro. <laughs> you fucking idiot. <laughs> <clears throat> Instead of adding three magazines, I added three extra SMGs by accident. <laughs> well, they got a magazine inside. <laughs> It's just you're a yeah. firm believer in the drop and go. Yeah, <laughs> you put like one SMG, fire is done, throw it down, and grab another. No action reload. It, it reminds me of that that picture I saw. Of the guy he was shooting the gun. He ran out of magazine. Um, um, uh, ran out of bullets. Took the magazine out. Threw the gun. Grabbed another gun. Put the magazine back into that gun and kept firing. Sorry, just let me uh, get some effects here. This reminds me of a uh, Golden Sun by Isaac Asimov. It's got like a. Some kind of uh, jungle expedition. They've got mm. an android with them. And it follows the three laws of robotics, but they like programmed it to not, not be able to recognize a human being. <laughs> so it still can't harm a human being, but it just doesn't know what a human being is. <laughs> See, that would, that, would, that would probably be a massive design flaw in robots in general, isn't it? To assume that all robots are built with this you can't harm human being stuff. Yeah. Only for it to then be able to be reprogrammed that it can't register what a human actually is. Yeah, well, it, what's funny is that uh, Isaac Asimov wrote those three laws because he was sick of sci-fi stories being about robots taking over. And so he said, you can write interesting stories about robots without just making it about them doing an uprising and taking over the world. Uh, and that's what the three laws are actually devised for, so that he could eliminate all plot holes that come from, well, why would you build that? And then ironically... <laughs> And then he all, had to. All of the uh, robot uprising things were playing on the whole. Yeah, they consider Isaac Asimov to be an influence. All right, ready. <laughs>